Are there particular theories as to why certain groups didn't make it, why certain groups didn't migrate, or uh, why certain groups that chose to migrate didn't find success in the locations that they went? What we know, as Chris um, pointed out, the, we, we see the earliest routes of humans around South Asia and very early on reaching the islands around Oceania, and then slower uh, filling in mainland Asia and filling in Europe and replacing the other forms that were there. So what does that mean exactly? They competed directly and then... Well, we would like to know this. There, there are um, uh, precious few sites where there is um, uh, evidence of cohabitation even um, close in time. I exactly what this... It, it's something that um, one can't help but imagine what it must have been like, but real archaeological and fossil evidence of, of of humans, archaic humans and Neanderthals at the same place at the same time interacting is um, uh, practically absent. There was probably a single bottleneck that everyone who is of non-African ancestry is a little bit more related to everyone else of non-African ancestry and that this was one migration of what would become a very successful group that, that out-competed or um, however one wants to phrase that oft the Neanderthals and the Denisovans and all other forms and, and is the sole survivor. How would you, Chris, describe that bottleneck? What do you think happened? Where did it occur? Uh, what happened during that particular uh, bottleneck? How many, uh, you know, how, what was the size of the various populations? Well, I think uh, estimating population size is really difficult. Geneticists do attempt it. And um, I mean, the data suggests that all of these human forms um, were at incredibly low numbers by modern standards. So, you know, we're talking at, at best tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people scattered over very large areas. So, and at times, evidence that some of these human groups came down to just a few thousand breeding individuals. So the Neanderthals, from genetic data, towards the end of their time, even before modern humans arrived and may have competed with them, they already, you could say, were an endangered group. Their genetic diversity was very low. So this seems to have been happening, and uh, you know, I think many people have said that it, it, you know, if the proverbial visitor from outer space came to Earth 100,000 years ago, they probably wouldn't have singled any of these groups out as, as, a, as a likely candidate for global domination with the numbers that were around at that time.